Coming to you live from George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University in Berea. Welcome inside our live streaming coverage of the Ohio Athletic Conference women's soccer season. The Yellow Jackets and the Heidelberg Student Princes tonight. It is uh, match number four, but for the Yellow Jackets technically match number three after their opener against Capital was canceled. The Yellow Jackets are looking for their first win of the season. Heidelberg in that same boat. They are 0-1 and 2. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Our contest presented to you by Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, the official health care provider for BW Athletics. Alongside Dominic Clary, I'm Brendan Gulick. Dominic, this Yellow Jacket team coming off of a pretty frustrating loss down at Otterbein. Um, you know, a, a decent start to the game. They were tied at one at one point, and things uh, for a couple of different reasons kind of unraveled. The, the final score was certainly lopsided, and I guess the, the best way to come back from a 9-2 loss is to get back out on the field quickly and uh, put it behind you and, and uh, just try to focus on what's in front of you. I mean, yeah, you can't focus on that. I mean, you look at that first game they played, they played tough, uh, struggled on it offensively, didn't put up a lot of shots. So you'd imagine today they're going to really rely on that midfield. You know, they have a really good defense. You know, they ignored last game. They have a good defense. There's been a lot of pressure on them lately. Get the ball to your midfielders, bring the ball up the field, and put pressure – on, on Heidelberg's goalie tonight. Yellow Jackets in white. Student Princes are in predominantly black with their orange numbers. And we are underway on uh, what is still a somewhat bright evening, but good cloud cover and, frankly, some drizzles here and there. We are expected to have a little bit of rain throughout the course of the evening, but not supposed to be anything uh, monumental. I don't think we're going to play during uh, some crazy rainstorm tonight. Wind is blowing uh, probably five to seven miles an hour left to right the way you see it at home. So it is at the Yellow Jackets' back as we open up competition. Let's give you the starting lineups in first for BW, where unfortunately Lindsey Valentine not available today in goal. And so the Yellow Jackets will go with sophomore goalkeeper Maddie Hoffman, a local product from Olmstead Falls. She will start tonight for the Jackets. Her defensive line includes Amanda Donahue, Anna Wenzinger, uh, Andrea Scatino, and Grace Silvestro. The Jackets are also without Morgan Gray, who is a central part to that back line. So tough defensively for the Yellow Jackets. They're going to have to play with uh, a couple of different players than they otherwise do. Other starters include Taylor Tomlinson, the freshman from Ursuline. Uh, Kenna Stones, who was one of the true leaders on this team. She's a senior in the midfield, as is Caitlin McGuire, a young lady from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Alex Guido, a good scoring threat offensively. She's a senior from Mako, Michigan. Maddie Farrell, a junior from Mako, Michigan as well. That's the starting lineup, along with uh, Sydney Graneman, who is uh, going to play kind of a defensive midfielder role today for the Jackets. She's out of Avon, Indiana. BW goes out in a predominantly 4-3-3 tactically. Good chance here for Tomlinson up that left side. Tries to make a move toward the corner and it is cut off. Lexi Langwasser, sophomore from Reynoldsburg back there for Heidelberg. Heidelberg goalkeeper is a Cincinnati native sophomore Meredith Bruce. Bruce is getting an opportunity to uh, try and come up with Heidelberg's first win of the season obviously hasn't been uh, a terrific year for Heidelberg quite yet either they have an 0-2 I should say 0-1 and 2 record one loss two draws and Bruce on the season has struggled a little bit but certainly not been the reason Heidelberg has fallen out of games her defense will have to come up with a, a big night tonight including Sophia Jackson the junior from Millbury who is working as the left back, or I should say left center back. Megan Hamilton, the sophomore, is the true left back. She's from Springboro. It was picked up by Maddie Hoffman. Mackenzie Damsa is a freshman forward from Barberton. Maddie Laus, a freshman. She's in the midfield from Wapakoneta. Ainsley Tucker, a sophomore all the way out on the West Coast. She is from California. Sophie Huber, senior midfielder from Heartland, Michigan mentioned Lexi Langwasser, one of the uh, sophomore defenders. She's playing right center back. Becca Thomas, a junior from Poland Seminary High School out in uh, far eastern Ohio. Audrey Kaufman and Caitlin Holmanak, the freshman from Fort Thomas, Kentucky, 
Rounds out the starting lineup for Heidelberg. Head coach there, Nick Spell. Of course, Jim Whitkin leading the way for the Yellow Jackets. Those are your starting lineups. Presented by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. And by the Oswald Company, they'll handle all of your insurance and risk management needs. Fifth minute of action, Yellow Jackets trying to get something going offensively here. And actually, you can't really see it at home, but the sun is peeking out a little bit, and we have a rainbow off, uh, off in the distance to the right. Maybe that's a, a good sign for BW. You know, you, you mentioned uh, Heidelberg, you know, struggling so far in the season. You know, they, they've only lost one game, but sadly they've tied the, the other two. Um, when, you know, when they lost, they only gave up three goals, right? You know, not, not bad, but they didn't put up any goals themselves. Now, they've only put up one, two, one and two in the games that they tied. So, you know, if you're Heidelberg, you're going to want to put pressure on Bald Wallace's, you know, goalie. Both teams, you know, have been struggling. On, on the offensive end. And this is Kaufman redirecting today. on net, and it deflects just over to the side where Heidelberg puts it home. was just about to say that Audrey Kaufman, the sophomore from Hilliard-Davidson, is certainly Heidelberg's best offensive weapon. And on a beautiful cross from the corner, she redirects it off of the goalkeeper, Maddie Hoffman. And it's finished off by Mackenzie Damsa. So one nothing Heidelberg here in the fifth minute. You know, we were talking before the game how the the only goal that Baldwin Walls gave up against ONU it was, you know, not the exact situation, but, you know, rebound off the goalie, and, you know, the, the opposing team was able to execute on that. Baldwin Walls can't let that happen today. Uh, it, well, again, I should say, you know, that's that's not a good, uh, good sign as we're very early into this game. So, unfortunately, the Jackets are going to have to play from behind tonight. Wallace certainly uh, missing Morgan Gray. I think perhaps you could attribute some of that frustration there to Morgan. On the free kick. Jackets send it forward. BW looking for an opening. And a little skipper from Granham in a long way out. Picked up without many issues there. Anyways, we're just saying there a moment ago that, uh, you know, when you miss one of your center backs and you're missing your starting goalkeeper, it's difficult to maintain the right level of communication through the middle of the defense. It's not that BW can't do that tonight. It's just going to be a different kind of challenge. You grow to really rely on certain players, certain voices. Good work there for BW's Caitlin McGuire. Well, you know, Morgan Gray, she's a senior on, on that defensive that defensive line. You know, so they rely on her in a lot of different situations. So, you know, missing her is very crucial. And not just, you know, she's a leader. You know, even just her playing ability, communication, her uh, being a leader, you know, a lot of things that you talked about. Wenzinger stepped up a bit too far there. Heidelberg giving Damsa a free run at it. Good recovery, though. Donahue got there in time to force a Heidelberg throw in. This will come from Caitlin Holmanak. You, know, you can't allow the, the, the strikers to get behind you if you're the defense. you got to keep them in front of you. You know, if they do get behind you, you got to make sure that's an offside situation. You know, and, and it wasn't right there. That was that was clean, and Baldwin lost them get behind them. They just can't allow that today. Jackets are throwing in on that far side. In uh, the three nothing loss that Heidelberg suffered to Capital, first half was pretty frustrating. They were outshot 16 to one by halftime, but only trailed two nil. Certainly still part of that game, but didn't uh, certainly didn't feel like the offense was able to get much going. 
Heidelberg able, though, to get in a better rhythm against Marietta this past weekend. Perhaps disappointed to start with a 2-0 lead and be playing quite well early on before giving up two goals late in the second half and drawing it two in overtime. In the meantime, Kenneth Stones. And BW will have the game's first corner kick. Comes in the ninth minute. You know, last Thursday, they didn't get too many, uh, too many corner kicks. They have to take advantage here. So Wenzinger lines it up. Early goal from Mackenzie Damsa off of a redirect. Heidelberg has the 1-0 lead as Wenzinger's ball is played right toward the net. Knocked down after it wasn't pulled in cleanly from Bruce. Finally cleared away. Caitlin Holmanak, the one that sent it out of bounds. You know, Maddie Farrell, uh, the, you know, the junior, the junior from Michigan, you know, she had a good opportunity there. There were a lot of defenders in her way, but for, for a moment it looked like that ball was about to sneak in. Andrea Scatino. Yellow Jacket throw in comes from Scatino. Too far out in front of Guido. Goal kick. Well, Yellow Jackets have already played against a couple of the premier teams in the conference this year, Ohio Northern and Otterbein, each 3-0. and And frankly, I think Otterbein is probably the best team in the league, although Northern always fields a good group. Bella Shively and company down there in Westerville have done such a great job. All-American talent, they are tough. You know, games like this for Baldwin Walsh are ones that you have to win. You know, when you, when you lose to that top top competition, you know, they've they've lost the two of them, Otterbein and, and ONU. Like you said, they have to beat the teams that are middle of the pack and below if, if they want any plans to uh, be in good position later in the season. Numbers here is Guido. Couldn't pull the trigger fast enough. Long shot looking for the top corner just a bit wide. You know, they were taking their chance from range there. Uh, you know, they, they saw a great opportunity there, but wasn't true, wasn't really able to execute as that was a little far right. Taylor Tomlinson a bit off target. 11th minute. Yellow Jackets have had better attack after allowing a frustrating goal early on. Another chance now. Tomlinson had it deflected out. And the Jackets will try a corner from the opposite end. You know, Baldwin Walsh are not executing right now. But you know what? That's okay. They're, they're putting pressure on this Heidelberg defense and the goalie. It, they need to keep this up. And they're going to get a shot as this game keeps going if they keep putting on pressure. This is Wenzinger to take the corner moment Guido screening Meredith Bruce goes all the way across the face of the goal untouched for a moment BW able to keep it inbounds I believe that was last touched by Heidelberg sure was so Wenzinger back to the other corner now 12 minutes in the books and Heidelberg leads the Jackets 1-0 Pride of Bishop Watterson ready to send it in. Here it comes. And she hangs it a bit too far. So another empty chance there for BW. You know, you hate to see opportunities like that go. You know, but the, the way Baldwin Walsh is playing, you know, you, you'd imagine there would be another opportunity like that soon. But they have to keep the consistent offensive pressure. Jackets are coming off of a, a tough overall score, but admittedly they played far better soccer in the second half. The game was a bit out of hand at that point after they trailed 7-1 to at the break, but uh, certainly better play. 
Taylor Tomlinson and Caitlin McGuire each scored in that contest this past weekend. Meanwhile, Bella Shively had a uh, record-breaking performance, if you can believe it, when Otterbein took that 7-1 to one lead by halftime. Shively had scored twice and assisted on all five of the other five goals as that one is sent wide, and it is a corner kick. The five assists were the most in a game by any player in the OAC since 1991, and Shively had done that by the end of the first half. And, uh, quite a performance for Bella. Delaney Earl, too. I haven't mentioned her name yet, but Delaney down at Otterbein, another really, really good talent. I mean, that's that. When you say five assists, that's in two goals. That's just a phenomenal stat line. Kind of Stones thought she could get her right leg extended on it, just a bit too heavy on the touch from the corner. Jackets nearly had an open chance right in front. We've played a quarter hour, and Baldwin Wallace trailing one nil. You know, you, you mentioned Kenna Stones. Look for them to rely on her. She's a senior on this team, you know, a very talented player, a leader on the field. They're going to rely rely on her time and time again. You know, and when they played ONU, they relied on her to get a lot of counters going. She was able to start them, but sadly, Baldwin Walsh wasn't able to finish them. Uh, well done by Scatino after, unfortunately, Stones tried to show some creativity with that back heel pass and turned it over to start the break. Heidelberg trying to take a deep breath and get some offensive momentum going again. Not too much of this game has been played in the midfield thus far. I'm not sure either team has asserted themselves one way or the other. Here's a good lead pass, McGuire for Stones. And she just won't quite catch up to it. You know, opportunities like that are, are, are things that you, you, Baldwin Wallace is going to keep trying and doing. It you know, failed. But that was a golden opportunity. And, and you know, it is a, co a common saying in, in soccer, especially you soccer. Good thought. Good thought. You, they, and that was a good thought. That was a true example of that. And you know, you imagine they're going to execute on one of these opportunities that they're that they're making for themselves. Stones gathers, finds the left back Scatino. Maybe Guido would be open, but that was pretty well defended. I like the size and the physicality so far from Lexi Langwasser. Really good youth program down in Reynoldsburg. Not surprised to see someone who is a physical presence in the back line at the collegiate level coming from that hometown. Here's a chance now for the dangerous Kaufman. And the Yellow Jackets certainly know where she's at at all times. You know, the refs are allowing them to play physical right now. We've seen a, we've seen a little pushing and shoving so far. Uh, nothing too out of hand, but, you know, the, the refs are letting a little bit go. They're giving these girls a lot of leeway so far. No substitutions either way yet. We're in the 17th minute. Heidelberg a 1-0 lead thanks to Mackenzie Damsa, the freshman her first career goal for Heidelberg after a shot came in from, oh, I would say roughly 10 to 12 yards out. Audrey Kaufman redirected it on frame. Maddie Hoffman, the goalkeeper for the Jackets, couldn't corral it cleanly. And when it ricocheted away, Domsa was sitting there right on the right post and knocked it home. ahead for McGuire. Keeps a full head of steam. Maybe a short jacket run coming. Guido right back to Caitlin McGuire. Perfect pass across. Cannot do it better than that. Yellow Jackets on the board. Taylor Tomlinson once more in the back of the net. I mean that is textbook soccer at its finest. They had a three, three players on the breakaway. They were able to execute 
Two beautiful passes to get that break to start and finish. That's just great soccer executed by Baldwin Wallace. Well, if you love the beautiful game, that is certainly how it's drawn up. And frankly, for as easy as the finish was, it was much more the pass from McGuire to Tomlinson that really grabs your attention. Extremely well executed, right on the money. And an equalizing blow for Baldwin Wallace. Tied at one. We are in the 19th minute. You know, that's perfect teach tape soccer right there. You want to talk about good, fundamental team soccer. You bring up that clip right there. I mean, if there's any young soccer players out there, that's the play you want to look at. That's the type of play you want to look for. Just tapped ahead from Ainsley Tucker. Toward the right corner with just a little too much check on it for the Jackets. Redirected toward a diving Hoffman, and she's able to grab it. BW couldn't catch up. That ball nearly crossed the end line, but fantastic effort. Kept it going. We've seen some good work a couple times now from that right midfielder, Becca Thomas, getting over to the ball. Obviously, she had the lengthy pass on the goal. Here's Kaufman now. <laughs> It's going to spin out of bounds just on the throw-in side of the flag. Oh, boy. Not what BW had in mind there. Hit the wrong side of the foot there, I would say. Hamilton on one hop, and Hoffman gathers. Temperatures are quite comfortable. In fact, I'm not sure these young ladies could expect much better than this. 63 degrees. And at the moment, no wind to speak of. The drizzling rain shower just prior to the game, at least for now, has uh, halted. You know, all week I've heard that Thursday was supposed to be, you know, rainy, no, you know, clouds everywhere, and you know, other than a little, little drizzle and a slight breeze. I mean, it's it's been a pretty beautiful day. Worked out well. How about this ball ahead from Kenneth Stones? Oh, <laughs> put it on a tee, ripped from the corner on the cross. Nothing doing there from Tomlinson, but man, I'm not sure if Kenneth Stones could have drawn that up any better than that to deliver a pass that rolls 70 yards or so up the field and basically die in the corner. Absolute perfection. It's like she was controlling the spin of the ball. <laughs> Halfway through the opening period, tied at one apiece. Good fight from BW. The bench was loving that defense there. Yeah, they should. Tomlinson now. Working on Langwasser. Delivers it wide right. And I believe we have our first substitution of the evening. Looks like for Baldwin Wallace, Anna Wolfinger, the freshman from Wadsworth. And she's now whistled on. She'll come in at right back. Grace Silvestro, the sophomore from Brunswick, exits for the time being. The former Wadsworth Grizzly is back on. Jim Wakin has a fairly young team this year. He's He's got some veteran presence in a couple of places, but for the most part, this is a relatively inexperienced group. And obviously, it, it kind of goes without saying, right? This has been an extremely difficult year on college athletics. And obviously, we're playing in a non-traditional season here at the college level. Obviously, soccer is a fall sport, but the OAC choosing to allow fall sports to compete in the springtime. Jim Wakin and his staff are glad to have any and all opportunities <laughs> to try and get this team to gel, knowing that 
when the spring season comes to an end, and the fall isn't too far behind. And they're basically wedging nine regular season games plus the OAC tournament into about a four and a half week stretch. The regular season opener was scheduled for March 14th, was canceled. And so instead on Thursday last week, March the 18th, losing to Ohio Northern. The last regular season game will be April the 11th, just after Easter. And then the OAC tournament starts the following week. Quarterfinals Tuesday, semifinals on Thursday, and the OAC championship on Saturday. If the Jackets are going to qualify, they need to start racking up some wins here. And perhaps tonight could be the night they get rolling. Both Heidelberg and BW looking for their first wins of the season. We're in the 24th minute, Baldwin Wallace equalized on a beautiful goal, assisted by Caitlin McGuire, knocked home by Taylor Tomlinson. That came after Heidelberg scored in the fifth minute. Mackenzie Damsa put home her first career goal. You know, this this has been a very strange year for for athletics, especially at the you know D three D two schools. You know, really, it's been a different year for them. Um, I mean, you even had Division one uh, soccer, uh, men's soccer. The tournament got delayed, uh, the national tournament. So you know, it's been very different um, at the D three level. A lot of teams have lost you know seniors and juniors. So you know, a lot of these teams that we've seen, even when we were announcing basketball, uh, you know, in the winter, a lot of these teams were really young. They struggled to gel together. And, you know, you don't have a lot of games to do that. In the fall, you usually have a good amount of games to kind of figure out who we are. You know, you know, teams can figure out their identity, how they're going to play. Well, now they only have nine short games and a, a month and a half to figure it out. And no non-conference action to speak of at all as McGuire crosses with the right foot. It's another beauty. Tomlinson came to it, but it was more well defended this time. Better anticipation from the right side of the defense. Give some credit there to Holmanak. Another change for the Yellow Jackets. Baldwin Wallace is bringing in Jillian Neal, the freshman from Copley. She'll spare Alex Guido. Guido gets a little handshake there from Jim Whitekin. Has to be pleased with his team's efforts so far after perhaps a slow start. Baldwin Wallace has been the better team over the last well, probably 20 minutes now at this point. I mean, they, they've played, uh, I would say, a more complete game so far uh, in the short, you know, the short minutes of this game. I mean, we still have a lot of time to go. But, I mean, their defense, you know, they've had a few laps, lapses, and Heidelberg was able to capitalize on one of them. But Baldwin Wallace, their offense, they, they've been really, really going at the, the defense of Heidelberg so far. Heidelberg's technically outshot BW 4-3, to three, but... Feels like the Jackets have had more dangerous chances, including this one just popped over the top left corner. Maddie Farrell with her back to the goal, spins and shoots with a soft touch and almost picks out the top left corner. Meanwhile, two changes coming for Heidelberg here. On the offensive end, Savannah Reif enters play. And Heidelberg brings Victoria Perez in, in the midfield. Let's see, Damsa checks out the early goal scorer. I'm trying to check and see the other young lady who has come off the field. She's over on the far side with her back not turned toward us. Hard to tell. I believe it is Sophie Huber. Yep, Huber's come out as well. One one draw at the moment. There are 18 minutes left in the first half. Good foot skills in the corner, putting one low, skipping toward the net. Handled by Bruce. You know, on a day down where there might be more rain, playing those low, skipping shots off the turf might be uh, an easier way to play it. You never know what kind of slick bounce you get, but I don't think that's necessarily an advantage today. I'm not sure it's quite wet enough for that to be the case. 
you know, last Thursday we saw that. Uh, I know you weren't here, but uh, the wind was was everywhere. You know, a little bit of rain. The the turf was wet, and anytime the the ball went straight up when it was heading to, heading towards the left side, the ball would just go straight back. And you know, they would have to keep it low. Some pretty bad bounces for for both teams and during the game. But you know, like you said, there's no wind. That flag is barely moving uh, that we can see, and. You know that that's you know like you said it's probably not a factor. But if we do get more rain like we're supposed to, uh, it could be could be a factor uh, more in the second half of this game. Good pace, good energy, and fairly well organized from Baldwin Wallace thus far. In the meantime, a substitution, another change here for Heidelberg, and this time it is Alessandra Piazza. And she comes on for Caitlin Holmanak. And I believe Piazza is going to go play at left back. And Sophia Jackson moves from the left to the right side now. Good chase there from McGuire. And the Jackets keep it playable for a moment. So Jackson switches sides of the field. We approach the half hour mark. Level at one thus far. Neal. Now Farrell looking for stones. Well, not that time. Teamwork there. Kaufman can't run to it fast enough. There, there was a lot of good passing there from Heidelberg uh, on that offensive possession they just had. You know, you, if you're a Heidelberg fan, you like to see a little bit more of that as, as we get a little bit deeper into this game. Maddie Farrell may have given Victoria Perez a little bit of a forearm, but not enough to draw the whistle. In fact, we have not had foul called on either team so far you know what I take that back there was one very early on in the contest one foul that led to a free kick near midfield well the good news for Maddie Hoffman after an opening mistake she really hasn't been tested all that much Looks like two more changes coming on, one either way. Heidelberg has brought on Bailey Diaz. And the Yellow Jackets, a sub for Kenna Stones, bringing Bella Rigel into the game. You just mentioned Hoffman. Um, she has two saves, so she's only really been challenged twice. Uh, Heidelberg, with four shots, only has three shots on goal. You know, uh, also the the one that went in. So other than, than the one goal that Heidelberg has, they've only had uh, two shots that uh, would be any worry for Hoffman. Becca Thomas comes out for Heidelberg. Jackets have a free kick, and it's in a pretty good spot here as Wenzinger measures it up. It's kind of a low driving ball. Cleared away now by Kaufman. Heavy touch and it rolls out of bounds. Piazza last to touch it. Jackets have another chance mounting. Ripping a shot at the left side. It rolls away harmlessly. Went for that near corner there. Uh, you know, really highly contested area. Um, you know, it's really hard to pick your, sh pick your spots there when you're on that spot of the field. You'd like to think that she was aiming for that top right corner, which is, you know, again, a very challenging spot to hit. Corner hangs in the middle of the box. Dangerous area. Meredith Bruce, with some authority, falls on top of it. She had Jillian Neal sitting right on her hip. You know, the opportunities just keep coming for Baldwin Wallace out of those corner kicks. Heidelberg 
Pittsburgh right now having trouble stringing passes together. They have been on the defensive most of this evening's game. 12 minutes, 13 seconds and counting left in the first half. Heidelberg another change. At the moment, it's uh, Courtney Mogio. She's come on for uh, Ainsley Tucker. And it looks like Heidelberg is waiting to bring Molly Gabriel in, but it won't be long before she comes on. A lot of subs so far here for Heidelberg. Baldwin Wallace only has two so far in this game. And a Wolfinger able to make the right play, clear it out of bounds, and set up Heidelberg's first corner kick of the evening. Not the case. They have actually changed the ruling. Is there an offside flag? Did I miss that? It must be the case. I apologize. I didn't see the flag go up, but it is ruled an offside. Uh, it's a poor clearance. Jackets have to scramble now. Kaufman. And it's cleared out. Now definitely a corner. Amanda Donahue able to recover and avoid giving up, at least through the run of play, a goal there. Once again, though, another challenge upcoming for Matty Hoffman and company. A couple of changes now. Heidelberg brings on Gabriel. And she is coming in at right center back for Langwasser. Meanwhile, the Jackets making two changes. I believe Courtney Marzenski has just checked in. This one hangs in the middle of the box. Another chance here. Played ahead toward McGuire. Jackets flip the field quickly. McGuire cuts it back. Right foots it across. A shot in rhythm and a diving save. Good effort. Marzenski couldn't quite finish it off, but Baldwin Wallace nearly took the 2 1 lead. And what a beautiful chance that was. You know, ignore, ignore the finish. That was just a beautiful opportunity, you know, being able to, to get that through ball there in the corner. Beautiful pass up the middle. Shot, you know, you know almost thought that was going to drop in on that right corner, but it wasn't able to as uh, Bruce made a wonderful save on that play. Courtney Marzenski came on for Taylor Tomlinson and immediately found herself in position to take a shot. The other change there, Cindy Graneman comes out, and Brandy Philippi is on for the first time this evening. We're in the 31st minute. Let's try that again. 36th minute, uh, entering the 37th now, with just under nine minutes remaining. A ripper from outside, and it's deflected away. Boy, some serious heat from Maddie Laus, and it was on target. Hoffman deflecting it out of the top corner of the goal. And suddenly, Dom, Heidelberg is taking some of the offensive momentum here. It's a huge momentum swinger for Heidelberg if they can score. Laus drives a low one. It is deflected away from the back of the goal. Hoffman attacked the ball but never got her hands on it after it hit someone in front of her. And for a moment, a heart-stopping moment, the back half of the goal appeared to be open. Hoffman doesn't clear that one away particularly well and gets another goal kick. Crosses the line. Huddleberg throw. We've seen we've seen the, these last four minutes. We've seen some really good soccer so far. Both teams, you know, creating offensive opportunities for themselves. You know, these goalies have really been tested. They're actually going to say there was a foul, not a throw in, and so 
Laos drives one into the middle of the box. Look how far forward the back line is pressed for Heidelberg. They are putting all these numbers ahead, and the problem with that is you can be susceptible to a quick counterattack. Good job recovering on the defensive end by Audrey Kaufman, whose job is not necessarily to play defense, but she comes up with a big play there. Bella Rigel helped keep that one alive. Flicked forward now and out of play. Really comfortable spring evening in Northeast Ohio. Glad to have you with us. Alongside Dominic Cleary, I'm Brendan Gulick. The Jackets trying to pull one away here. And that one is kicked well off target. That one might haunt Jillian Neal because all of a sudden, she found herself with a chance to take a shot from a great angle. You know, I don't think I don't think Neil was expecting to be open right there. <laughs> the the ball kind of came out of nowhere, and that that opportunity I don't I don't think she saw it coming. Uh, may have panicked a little bit and uh, put up a shot that you know she may, she may be regretting right about now. Mackenzie Damsa first struck in the fifth minute off a redirected goal, and the Yellow Jackets. Tied the game one apiece. Taylor Tomlinson on a gorgeous pass from the right side of the box in transition. Caitlin McGuire to Tomlinson to level it at one. Just over five and a half minutes left in the first half. is exchanged either way. UW trying to get this out of a dangerous spot. McGuire holds it off. Played up toward Rigel, but too far out in front of her. You know, if that pass was just a little bit flatter down the line, uh, you know, Bella Regal might have been able to get to that. You know, she's she's been a spark plug. The, you know, the past uh, few games that we've seen her, uh, she comes off the bench, brings a lot of uh, energy. Hasn't scored a goal yet, but you know she's been pretty good off the bench and uh, creates some offensive opportunities and counter opportunities as well. Macy Zachary, the freshman from Crawfordsville, Indiana, on here for Laos and perhaps the final 4:30 of this first half. Heidelberg trying to. Bring fresh legs to the front of the formation just to kind of see if they can have a little bit stronger attack here late. Hoffman. Well, she's got to be a little bit better on her clearances. That's another one really dangerous. At least it wasn't toward the middle of the field. Right now, I think Andrea Scatino has been one of the most valuable jackets on the field. She's had a really good first half. She wasn't involved specifically on the goal scoring play, but like what I've seen from her so far. We saw a lot, a lot of that from her on Thursday. Uh, she was really solid. Uh, you know, she 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 brings uh, toughness on onto the ends there on on defense. McGuire taps it forward. Neil couldn't get to it, but a yellow jacket throw with 3:32 and counting. Bella tapped it forward. McGuire from the corner. Off the mark. We've seen a pretty even soccer game so far. Uh, you know, both both teams are, are pay, playing pretty even right now. Uh, you know, pretty equal opportunities so far by both teams. There's another good example of why I think Scatino's stood out in the first half. She never had any intention of going after that one as we get a foul there and a free kick coming for the Jackets. But Andrea did the right thing, just making sure she did the, the fundamentally sound play, shield off. 
the attacker and make it fairly easy on your goalkeeper to pick that up on one hop. You know, she does a very good job not letting the, the striker the striker get behind her. She keeps him in front, doesn't allow the, 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 the player on the outside to get an opportunity to get in the corner and have, and have a cross pass into the middle of the box. Too much on that one from Wenzinger. Final two minutes before halftime. There's a nice idea. Lobbing one toward McGuire. Time for Caitlin to try to get creative. A little too heavy a touch. She had beaten Piazza on that first touch, but rolled it too far away from herself. Six shots for the Jackets, three on target. Huddleberg, five shots, three on goal. BW's had four corner kicks compared to two for the Student Princes. And our early goals from Taylor Tomlinson and Mackenzie Damsa. Approaching the final minute of the first half. Yellow Jackets still looking for that first win of the year, 0-2, with a canceled game. Six games left in their regular season. And only two more on their home field. Fortunately, just three home games on the docket after that capital contest was canceled. I suppose it's possible that they could reschedule it, but pretty unlikely. Here's a chance in the final 30 seconds. Out of play, the Jackets trying to force the issue a bit. Inbounds pass comes. Good job by Neal, a really good chance. Rolls away harmlessly, but not before it made Heidelberg's hearts collectively skip a beat. Boy, Baldwin Wallace, darn near, took the lead there before the end of the half. I mean, that's the type of effort that, that you want when, when a period's coming to the end, because a lot of teams kind of, oh, end of the half, they're not going to be able to, to go down the field and score. But that's, you know, great execution on Baldwin Wallace to be able to push at the end of the half. Well, it didn't get off to a great start for BW. They gave up a goal in the fifth minute, and considering they came off a 9-2 defeat, that was certainly not what Jim Whitkin and his team had envisioned. But I give the Yellow Jackets a lot of credit for the way they responded quickly with uh, a good rebounding effort. They leveled the game just about 13 minutes later, and we stay tied at one apiece at the break. Dom and I will be back here in uh, just under 10 minutes with the start of the second half. You're watching live streaming coverage of Baldwin Wallace Soccer tonight, BWYellowJackets.com.
All right, ready to start the second half tonight. Baldwin Wallace and Heidelberg. The Yellow Jackets and Student Princes are tied at one apiece. If you're just joining us alongside Dom Clary, I'm Brendan Gulick. Yellow Jackets surrendered a goal in the fifth minute and uh, certainly didn't get off to a great start. But I think, Dominic, the, the way they responded was much more admirable. They didn't panic. And they certainly scored a, a really good goal and had a few other good chances. And frankly, BW probably feels like they could lead this game by perhaps one or two. I mean, it, the coach for Ball Moss, you have to be, the whole coaching staff has to be excited about what they saw at, you know, at the majority of that first half. I mean, they, they, they played hard. A lot of corner opportunities. I believe they had, yeah, they had four four corners, no offsides, no fouls. I, they played a pl pretty clean game so far, and you, they just have to finish on offensive end. And if they keep playing at this rate, they'll have the opportunities. You just have to rely on your midfielders and your strikers to just finish on the other on the other side of the field. If you missed the first half, the Jackets are in white, and Heidelberg's in predominantly black with their orange numbers and lettering. Teams flip sides this half, so the Jackets are attacking off to the left, defending down to the right. Heidelberg's come out here with a bit of, uh, bit of offensive mojo. Here are the student princes. They're probably feeling like the 1-1 tie is a bit fortuitous because the Yellow Jackets, well, I don't know the exact time breakdown. I promise you the Yellow Jackets had possession longer than Heidelberg did. Kenna Stones played a good chunk of time in the midfield, but subbed off late in that first half. She's back out there to start the second half. I want to see Baldwin Wallace use her a bit more. Her size and physicality, her strength, certainly part of her attributes. Graneman, good fight. That one's knocked out of play. On the other side, I think Audrey Kaufman's been really good. Frankly, she's, for not being a defender, she has taken pride in playing well in that aspect today. You know, in that first half, we talked about uh, uh, Andrea Scatino. Look for her to push up when when Baldwin Wallace is in the offensive end. Uh, they, you know they trust her to push up. That you know she will get back on time. But she has an offensive ability. Uh, she really loves uh, passing the ball to opposite sideline. She likes looking on the other side opportunities. So look for her to to pass across a little bit further than just the middle because she loves those opportunities. Scatino trying to track that one, knowing that it came off Heidelberg. The Jackets throw in. What does Heidelberg want to do here with Tucker? She couldn't really find a place to go with it. Kind of stones, great pressure. Good patience. Boy, that was a nice idea. Didn't quite work out the way they wanted, but Piazza certainly gave it a good chase. Actually, a bigger part, and that was Becca Thomas, who was back in there after subbing out in the first half. Guido taps this forward now. Tomlinson with nice foot skills. Goal kick. Actually, they're calling it a corner kick. Perhaps I just misread the official. I thought he pointed toward the goal, but it is a corner kick for the Jackets. 50th minute. Wenzinger and the Jackets trying to come up with a go-ahead goal. Stones was taken down, no call. A chance for McGuire, rips it back toward the middle, and it's cleared into the other corner. Another great opportunity for Baldwin Wallace. If you're a Baldwin Wallace fan, this is a perfect opportunity to execute and take the lead. Guido screening Bruce at the moment. Wenzinger.
Hanzinger hangs it in the air over the top of Bruce, falls loose in the box. Farrell put it up into the sky, and Heidelberg knocks it away. A thwart danger for just a moment. You mentioned not too long ago, uh, you know, getting Kenna Stones involved. I believe that pass was intended for her. You know, they're, they're going to rely on the senior, especially down the stretch, to, to execute and, and to, you know, have them take the lead. BW just trying to wear Heidelberg down right now. I think the Jackets have played fairly well in the midfield. Graneman. Jacket throw. BW doing a pretty good job of maintaining its shape. Heidelberg kind of fluctuates a bit. Looks like a, a little bit more of a 4-4-2 defensively. When they get on the attack, it can look a little more like a 4-3-3. That's unfortunately a mistake there by Thomas. Stalled the run. Heidelberg keeps it. done by Wenzinger. Chance here for Tucker playing it toward the corner. And the Jacket defense comes to their aid. Goal kick. I believe that was Stones on the defense there. You know, usually she, she lingers around the middle of the field, but she went in the corner there. Uh, you know, played great defense and you know, prevented any opportunity for the student princes. Hoffman scoops it up. Fabulous work. Everything but the finish there. Huber turned it over, but not before avoiding a couple of yellow jackets. And BW commits a foul. Coverage tonight brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. By Buffalo Wild Wings in Medina, Strongsville, and Warrensville Heights. And by Barron's Bus Company, the official charter bus company for Yellow Jacket Athletics. Low driving cross into the middle. The Jacket defense was in the right place. Well done as a group. Guido didn't hit it firmly enough to redirect that pass to the outside. Scatino doesn't get there, slips through. You know, that, that could have been a very big counter opportunity for Ball and Wallace. Uh, but, the, you know, they, they were not able to, to, to finish and, and, you know, really get that, that counter going. It kind of ended before it really even started. I think too many times tonight, Heidelberg has tried to advance the ball without – without much of a plan. They've kicked it into some open spaces where either they haven't been able to run to it or the offense has miscommunicated. I haven't seen any particularly lengthy possessions from Heidelberg. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of teams that want to play more direct play and, you know, for those who don't know what that is, it, you know, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of just pushing that ball right down the field. Uh, you know, not a lot of passing in the back, not a lot of playing around the middle. Let's bring the ball upfield. Uh, you know, when you play a, a, a direct game, you know, sometimes that can bite you a little bit when you're going against a very tough defense, which we know Baldwin Wallace has. You know, that, that can kind of haunt you a little bit and can really ruin a lot of opportunities. This one hangs into the middle. Great scoring chance. W picks it up. That was well done by the jacket goalkeeper, Matty Hoffman. 
Rebecca Thomas was flirting with danger there. Could not finish it off. Fifty-sixth minute of action. Heidelberg scored in the fifth. Jackets in the eighteenth. Farrell trying to make life difficult on the far side. And it is a corner kick. Maddie Laus will take it. Laus sends it in quicker than perhaps uh, her teammates expected. All of a sudden, that ball kind of quickly got on Kaufman. You know, they didn't look really set there. Uh, they were still kind of figuring out what they wanted to do, and, you know, the ball was right in front of them. Maddie Hoffman now. Ahead to Guido. Well, Scatino kind of gave up on that one a bit. Good idea from Farrell, though. Thomas, last to touch it. Any opportunity that Heidelberg has to chance, I mean, Baldwin Wallace in every spot of the field is contesting them, not allowing them to get a smooth progression down the field. Farrell had a lane for a moment. Defense collapsed on her. Damsa with her eyes upfield. Can't split the defense. Perhaps she mishit it. I'm surprised she didn't try to go over the top. Good defense there, too, from Grace Silvestro. Grace is in there, I believe, in place of Morgan Gray. Missed the note earlier, Morgan Gray and Lindsey Valentine unavailable tonight for BW. Their starting center back and starting goalkeeper. Jackets making a change on the front lines. At least for a moment, McGuire comes out. Courtney Marzinski back in. Marzinski nearly scored late in the first half. A fancy move there. Almost too fancy for her own good. Tomlinson, left foots it toward the middle. Nobody surging forward for the brown and gold. No, she could have brought that ball up a little bit more on the side. Uh, I think after losing the, almost losing the ball there, uh, she may uh, may have wanted to get rid of it a little sooner than she probably had to. Farrell touches ahead. Stones from long range, and you could tell she looks away with disgust before the ball ever really even approached the goal. She knew she didn't hit it well. You know, sometimes that ball just doesn't leave the foot like you'd quite imagine it in your head. And, uh, you know, you, you probably imagine that Stones was thinking that that ball was going to go in the uh, upper corner. But, uh, sadly, it just hit her foot a little, little wonky and wasn't able to put it in the spot that she wanted. Foul behind the play. And they will bring it back to give Heidelberg a free kick after it looked like it would be BW ball up the field. 59th minute, Heidelberg scored early. The Jackets about 13 minutes later. And both teams have had some chances between now and then, but neither has put one home. You know, Baldwin Walsh has, has, has had opportunities, but that being said, they've only, they only have one more shot than they had, uh, you know, before half. They have seven shots to, to Heidelberg six. So there's not really a lot of shots uh, being put up, but there are a lot of corner opportunities that we've seen so far and a lot of counters as well. This doesn't look great for BW. The defense scampering back, but Heidelberg for a moment there was mounting possession, rallying the troops. But the Jackets do a good job. Guido 
trailing the play. Here's Thomas. Low cross, knocked out. is having trouble penetrating that back line right now. Jackets are packing together the defense. Sometimes it's best to just live to fight another day. Problem is, with so many numbers back and some of these long clearances, UW really hasn't run up the field as a unit much. They, you know, they've really relied on their strikers and midfielders to kind of do their own thing. They haven't really changed formation or... Well, this is a perfect play, and it turns into a blocked shot. Andrea Scatino, unfortunately, let it roll by her on the near sideline, and Becca Thomas delivered a good pass, but good interior defense negated a real good chance. This one is flicked across the way. Scatino chests it down and knocks it free. Heidelberg mounting the attack again. The Jackets have to get it out of their own end here. I think both teams sensing the need for reinforcements, bringing on changes. Jillian Neal on for the Jackets. Looks like Savannah Reif and Victoria Perez in for Heidelberg. Jackets bring Guido off. Heidelberg changes include taking Tucker out and Thomas. Neal was out of bounds there. For a second, I think uh, Neal might have thought that she got away with one there. Good chance for Heidelberg. Better job by Amanda Donahue. Really feeling out Audrey Kaufman charging hard. Yeah, you know, Baldwin's uh, defensive line has just been suffocating ever since that uh, early goal by Heidelberg. Rain starting to pick up a bit now. The Jackets preparing to bring on two changes. Casey Goloboff, the freshman from Valley Forge, and Brandy Philippi both coming on here as the light rain commences. It was raining a bit before the game started, and then pretty much from the time we began the match, it's been dry. Nothing they can't play through. Neal charging the left side. Scatino has been playing pretty far up so far these past few minutes. I'll look for her to impact the offense. Andrea set back her direction. She'll throw it in. This one's cleared out. Scatino. One good pass, but the second one was off target. Instead, Heidelberg grabs a loose ball in the midfield to keep things moving forward. Here's a ball sent across the face of the goal. Now there's a flag up. Heidelberg scored, but the offside flag is waved. The 
flag went up well before the goal went home. It certainly frustrates the Heidelberg fans, but it was not a late call from the referee. I can at least tell you that. I unfortunately don't know without a replay. Can't tell you one way or the other how accurate the call was, but it was blown early, so disappointing for Heidelberg when they thought they had a go-ahead goal. That's the worst. You score a goal just to look over and see the uh, the ref having the flag in the air. Uh, you know, pretty demoralizing. But, you know, if you're Heidelberg, you can't hang your head on it. you got to keep putting the pressure on Baltimore. So that was a great counter opportunity they had. And you just got to keep capitalizing. Got to keep pushing. More pressure on Baltimore. Game is in the 66th minute. This one is poorly cleared. A really good chance now as Perez rips a shot off Scatino. Another opportunity here this time, Holmanac. Too far out in front. Heidelberg gaining confidence. Small collision there between Stones and uh, Megan Hamilton. Thankfully, both players appear to be all right. Changes though. McGuire returns. Get you the other change in a moment. Long ball played ahead. That's a pretty ball. Sure is. But the shot comes wide and off target. Olaboff misfires. Two more new BW players. Bella Regal and Anna Wolfinger, both on. McGuire was back in for Courtney Marzinski. The intensity of the rain dropping off a bit now. Also a change for Heidelberg was Chloe Grievous, freshman defender from Lexington, Kentucky. Jackets are down in the corner, and they earn a corner kick. That's their seventh corner of the corner kick of the night. They've they've had them in bunches today as they've uh, spent a lot of time in Heidelberg's end. Perhaps this could be the one that gives them. The go-ahead goal. Low driving ball in the middle. It's redirected in. Baldwin Wallace on the board. 2-1. Scored by Yellow Jacket Junior Bella Rigel. You know, I mentioned her earlier how she's a spark plug. She seems like she's everywhere on the offensive end. You know, she's a speedster. She's, you know, affecting the game in multiple ways and was in the right spot at the right time. She was able to get there one at the at the right spot, was able to execute, put it in that bottom left-hand corner. I mean, what a great substitution uh, by the Baldwin-Wallace coaching staff as she made an impact right away as we have a 2-1 game. A huge goal for the Jackets. Really good work from Bella in a crowded place there right in the middle of the field. And she scores to give Baldwin-Wallace the 2-1 to -one lead. Bella's first goal of the season. Jackets looking for their first win. Could they add another one? Bella lobs it over the top. It's another beauty toward the corner. And taken away. What a what a beautiful pass! I mean, she put that in, in the right spot. They just weren't able to to execute once that ball was was delivered about on the top right hand corner of that box. I'm trying to double check, that might be her first career goal. I believe it is. Well, an 
Exciting time for it, for sure. Of course, a legacy player here at BW after her dad, Sam, played soccer here in the early 90s. Jackets making another change. Bailey Hall, the freshman, comes in, replacing Tomlinson for the moment. You know, we, we've talked about, you know, Andrea as well, but, you know, Bella and Andrea, both former uh, Red Dragons from Niles, uh, you know, lifelong friends that came here to BW together, and, you know, they've made a great impact so far. And, you know, we've mentioned both of them a lot today, one playing phenomenal defense and, you know, one, one scoring the go-ahead goal. Change there for Heidelberg, too, as Maddie Laus came out. I did not see who came in for her. We'll try to get that for you shortly. In the meantime, can't lose track of Kaufman in the corner. Good spinning pass. That's kicked out of bounds now. Baldwin Wallace, Yellow Jackets, leading Heidelberg 2-1 on Bella Regal's first career goal. Taps it forward. Hall on the run. And she kept it in play. Right back to Bella. Little tag team work there. Golubov lost it. Free kick for the Student Princes. You know, look for Heidelberg to, to push offensively. And, uh, you know, for Bald Malls, may not be uh, so aggressive. Uh, may, may put a few more players on defense. Uh, they'll still look to extend their lead. I say, certainly being aggressive here, bad news for the Jackets. Caitlin McGuire went down. She's having trouble getting back to her feet, holding her right leg. The referee trying to give her a chance to work it out on her own before waving on the training staff, and he will stop the clock and bring on the athletic training group. 17:49 left in regulation. Baldwin Wallace out front of Heidelberg, two to one. Back in a moment here in Berea. Yellow Jackets right now are uh, collectively holding their breath with senior Caitlin McGuire hobbling off the field. I don't want to speculate the nature of her injury, but it, well, I can certainly tell you it was her right leg after that quick shot sails wide left. Hopefully Caitlin's okay. And again, not sure if she's going to return tonight or not, but uh, hopefully she's all right. Yellow Jackets have a 2-1 lead. Regal 
Russell sends it back ahead. Volobov, Hall, and now cleared out. Scatino fighting Thomas for it. And it goes to Heidelberg. The Jackets probably feel a bit fortunate to have a 2-1 lead because Heidelberg has certainly dominated possession in this second half. They've had far more dangerous chances. Student Prince's throw incoming. You know, Heidelberg has had possession, but they're still struggling to put up shots, but quality shots as well. I mean, it's one thing if you're just kicking the ball from beyond the box, but you, you want to be able to, to get the ball around the top of the box area and put up some quality shots. Heidelberg has struggled to do that. I know they had had some key opportunities, but Baldwin Wallace has had them more in bunches than, than Heidelberg has uh, so far. Another change here for Heidelberg. And comes back on for Damsa. Jackets are trying to win their first game since November 2nd, 2019. After the 2020 fall season was canceled and moved to this spring. Here's a good opportunity and a bit of a collision there. Golubov is sealed off by Meredith Bruce. There's a good move on the outside. Long low skipper goes wide right. Enter the final quarter hour of regulation. 76th minute now. Jackets leading it 2-1. to one. Our coverage tonight presented by Santos Italian Restaurant in Middleburg Heights, family owned and operated for 35 years. And by American International. If you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. Another change for Heidelberg. This time it's Savannah Reif running off. Thomas returns. You know, expect Heidelberg to be a little desperate here. I think there were actually two changes. Maddie Laus returned too. I beg your pardon. Go ahead. You know, expect expect Heidelberg to be a little des uh, desperate here. Uh, really, really uh, try to push the tempo. Uh, you know, continue that, that direct play that they've been trying to set. Um, you know, 13 minutes, it may seem like a lot of time, but in soccer, you know, that's not a lot of time. And, the, you know, the way this game has been going out for Heidelberg, that also means probably not a lot of opportunities if we're talking about the way the game has gone, you know, a little bit earlier. I don't know if I would agree with that. I mean, certainly not yet, but you could argue that 13, 14 minutes is still an awful lot of time. If you get down toward five minutes to play, that might be the case, but there's still plenty of time here for the student princes. The way they've possessed the ball in the second half, I, I certainly think it's not panic time yet. It's only a one-goal difference, but there's no doubt 2-1 is a dangerous lead, and you don't want to start resting on your laurels. Scatino. Oh, it's a perfect idea, but really, really good defense by Megan Hamilton. Former Springboro Panther holding off BW as they tried to head toward the middle of the park. Maddie Farrell comes back, and Olivia Kane checks in for BW. For BW nine, Kane. And number 25, Maddie but to your point, Dom, you know, Huddleberg doesn't have a win yet this year, and certainly when you're looking for your first victory, they start to press a little bit 
toward the end of games when you might be looking up at the scoreboard? You know, e even then, a 2-1 lead in soccer is a lot different than most sports, right? Um, you know, uh, people often compare a 2-1 lead. In basketball, a 10-point lead. Uh, you know, you're up by one, 10-point lead. So, you know, you can view it that way. Um, but, you know, even if they do score a goal here in these, these last uh, 12 minutes here, you know, they, they have a chance to tie again. And, you know, if you're Heidelberg, you definitely don't want to do that. You want to come out here with a win. Jackets aren't going to change their style of attack yet. Heidelberg throw in coming. You know, I mentioned earlier that maybe Baldwin Walsh is going to play more defensively, but scrap that. They don't need to. I, the, them playing aggressive, you know, keeping the, the ball on Heidelberg's side it hasn't hurt them yet. And, you know, they're doing a good job keeping it there. The, their defense is staying back. So why not keep that? Scrap what I said earlier. Baldwin Walsh, keep playing the way you're playing, and then you'll have a very, very good, good opportunity that you're going to go away with the win. Heidelberg thinking perhaps they need to bring Mackenzie Domsa back in. Look at Hoffman coming all the way out of the top of the box. What kind of resolve do the student princes have? A little miscommunication there. Doesn't cost them possession. Perez plays back and left. This is better organization. Rolled toward Kaufman. Back into the middle of play. Well done by Wenzinger. Good anticipation. You want your center back to be aggressive. Stepping into those kinds of slow rolled passes. Never gave Laos a chance from what would have been dead on. W throw in as we enter the 81st minute tonight. Good footwork there from Golubov. Wenzinger heads it back forward. Scatino controls in space with a right foot, and Andrea puts it right on frame. Like the idea. You know, at this point of the game, up one, nothing wrong with with a shot like that. Now, if you're down, you know maybe a better opportunity, but you know the the way the game is right now, you know not, not a not a bad look by by Andrea Scatino. And certainly when you get. Some open space like that. If you're going to step into one, rip it with confidence as the offside flag goes up. And Heidelberg pretty frustrated over in front of their bench. Certainly looked like a nice blossoming play with Kaufman streaking up that far side. You know, Heidelberg didn't have any offsides in this first half of the game. But, you know, they have two so far. A um, little less clean of a game for them. But, you know, being down, you know, that, that tends to happen, you know, pretty much whatever sport you're playing. Well, and obviously the first offside one really hurt and took a goal off the board. Although you could also argue that perhaps they scored because they were offside. I suppose there's two ways to look at it. Either way. Heidelberg did have one go in the back of the net, whistled back. 82nd minute, BW2, Heidelberg 1, as Scatino stands her ground nicely. Look at Andrea battling. It was a pass right on the money. Tomlinson couldn't handle it. And unfortunately, the Jackets didn't catch up to it. Meredith Bruce ahead. Defense from Wolfinger. Seven and a half minutes remaining. The Jackets and Student Princes both making changes. Cindy Graneman returns. 
Tom Wittgen wants Sydney back in there at the defensive mid spot. Clock stops 7-19. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but referee was addressing something with Maddie Farrell. You know, it's hard because we're in this little box. You know, if there's any type of commotion on the field, we're, we're, we're never able to hear what's going on. Now, we're probably not able to hear that conversation, but that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mic up the referee. That's a good way to do it. 84th minute, Tomlinson. Taylor to her left where she is strong and with the left foot she goes right at Bruce. Perhaps too direct there. But I think you're seeing flashes from the freshman forward Taylor Tomlinson who could become one of BW's primary scoring options here over the next couple of years. Life after Rachel Bender has been a little bit difficult lose somebody that's of that ilk. Rachel truly one of the all-time great players in the history of Yellow Jacket women's soccer. Got to find some other uh, other options offensively. You know, it, and they kind of struggle to, to get that going so far, but Thomas and Shore looks promising. She had a really good move as we get to see what she's going to do here. Well, keep your spacing here, four on three. Heidelberg struggling to get back. Bella Regal's been hanging out there, but Tomlinson never passed her the ball. Instead, back toward Farrell in the middle. Jackets trying to stay with it. That was a bit disappointing considering the full head of steam BW had. Never even got to the top of the 18. You know, Thomas is probably getting a little too fancy there. You know, after the impressive footwork she had in the last play, uh, she probably wanted to continue that as uh, Bella Regal was open in the corner there. Hoffman cleared it away. She recovers. Just over five minutes to go. The Jackets trying to use the sideline as their friend here. Hoffman on one hop, falls on it. That's that. 86th minute. Regal, who right now has the game-winning goal on her line. The first career collegiate goal for Bella Regal. Right now the difference between the Jackets and the Student Princes. BW will play their next two affairs on the road at Muskingum and at John Carroll. We're coming home to play Wilmington on April the 5th. Flag stays down, another golden chance, but it crosses the end line. Mm -mm -mm. Another change for BW. Stop the clock during the substitution. Baldwin Wallace brings Marzinski back on. Now you mentioned a little bit ago. They're they're definitely using that sideline to their advantage. You know, that sideline could be an extra factor here. And, you know, kick the ball out of bounds, you can burn a few seconds and you know, that can, can truly be a difference uh, for, to a win and a loss for, for Bald and Wallace in this game. could really affect the outcome. Obviously no stoppage time in the college game. They'll just stop the clock if they need to. So Heidelberg knows they are running out of time with truly 3.35 to play. Maddie Farrell lays it off. Tomlinson now cuts back. And it's deflected out of play as BW should take their time toward the corner. You know, i got to say, I, I'm really impressed on Thomason's skill with the ball. You know, her footwork is very good. She's able to fold the defender 
uh, you know, fake that she's going towards the middle and goes towards the left. She created a good shot for her earlier. And, you know, I'm interested to see how her, her how she gets better with that as her career continues to blossom here at Baldwin Wallace. Wenzinger spins it across and it's snared out of the air. As Bruce pulls it in with 2.45 to play. Danger lurking. Audrey Kaufman. It's saved by Hoffman. Kaufman against Hoffman and Maddie Hoffman able to deflect it away. Heidelberg had a golden chance. I mean, Hoffman has come into this game, you know, not usually the starter, and makes a potentially game-saving goal. I mean, we're going to find out if that's true, but what a play by the sophomore. She's truly stepped up today, and it showed on that play. Danger not quite removed yet as Maddie Hoffman scoops it up. Well, the youth movement for Jim Whitkin's Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets might come up with their first victory in about 18 months. Under two minutes to play. That's a beautiful pass toward the corner. Well, they've had a few, few beautiful kicks through balls, you could even call them, to, um, to the corner there, you know, to your midfielders. They've had a lot of those. You know, as the season progresses, as the short season progresses, I want to see more of that from, from the midfield of Baldwin Wallace. More of those opportunities. We haven't seen those in the first two games. Let's see if they can continue that as the season progresses. Jillian Neal is on for Maddie Farrell. The Yellow Jackets can basically try to just pin it in the corner and make life really annoying for Heidelberg with only a minute 20 to play and BW nursing a 2-1 to one lead. Boy, what an opportunity Audrey Kaufman had on that ball that got stymied in the middle of the field. She had a breakaway chance, and Maddie Hoffman, the sophomore goalie from just up the road in Olmstead Falls, deflecting the ball out of bounds and saving a complete disaster. 48 seconds to go. Clock is under 40 seconds. Heidelberg with perhaps one last chance. 30 seconds and counting. And the flag goes up looking for Thomas. And that's going to do it. The Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets pick up their first win of the season. Final 10 seconds about to tick off. Time will quickly expire. Final score two to one. Bella Regal, the game winning goal for BW in the second half. Her first career goal, and it comes in a perfect time. The 69th minute, the Jackets win tonight two to one. So Baldwin Wallace goes to one and two on the season. Heidelberg falls to 0 2 and 2 as the Yellow Jackets celebrate a victory. I mean, that was an exciting one we had here tonight. Uh, always great to see uh, Game M and the Baldwin Wallace win. Uh, you know, congrats to Bella Regal and her family as, you know, they celebrate her first collegiate goal. Um, but also I want to give pra uh, props to uh, Maddie Hoffman. I mean, that – I mean, a lot of goalies aren't going to make that save, right? I mean, she – it could have ended very, very bad for Baldwin Wallace in that situation. She came up big. It was a beautiful save. Uh, but great game on, on, on both teams. And uh, the, the youth movement, as you called it, uh, really stepped up here for Baldwin Wallace today. Well, the Yellow Jackets certainly should be proud. It was a fun night and great to get back into the win column. So the Jackets, again, they'll be on the road the next two at Muskingum and at John Carroll before they'll play Wilmington back here at home on April the 5th. For Dom Clary, I'm Brendan Gulick. It's a busy weekend here in Berea. We'll see you on Saturday for two lacrosse games. The men and women both at home on Saturday, followed by, uh, by a Sunday home men's soccer game against the Fighting Muskies. All here on BWYellowJackets.com.